Welcome to my class. I'm Drew Collip. In today's class, we're going to talk about density conversions. From a previous lecture, we talked about the density of pure water. The density was one gram per mil. We also know that one mil means one centimeter cubed. As a result, we can use these as conversion factors when we're dealing with pure water. We can now solve a question like this. What is the volume of one mole of water? Let's say in milliliters. We want the number of mils. To get there, we can go via grams if we convert from moles to grams using the molar mass. Let's do that now. One mole of water multiplied by my molar mass. Moles on the bottom, grams on the top. I will then have grams of water that I can convert to mils of water because I have the density. One mil is one gram. Molar mass of water, H2O, we have 18.02. Oxygen is 16, hydrogen is 1.008. 1.008 times two plus 16, rounded off to four significant digits is 18.02. As a result, we can calculate that one mole of water is 18.0 mils of water. This means in 18.02 mils of water, there is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water. Using the density, we can now convert between volume and mass. Now this was all previous knowledge from another lecture. Now let's talk about the density of other chemicals. Each chemical will have a different density associated with it. And we don't expect you to know these all. Water's the only one we'll expect you to know. If we examine some gases at STP, STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. Air, the air we breathe, which is mostly nitrogen, partially oxygen and other compounds, is 1.29 grams per liter. Nitrogen is about the same. Makes sense, 70% of the air is nitrogen, so the density would be about the same. Water vapor, slightly less. Helium, slightly more. Hydrogen, even less. Please note that density decreases with increasing altitude and increased temperature. Here's a formula here. This is not important for this math class, but it might be some handy knowledge to know for the future. Let's look at some liquids at standard temperature and pressure. Ethanol, ethyl alcohol, the kind you drink, 0.7989 grams per mil. Olive oil, slightly less. There's your water, exactly one. Chloroform, mercury, look at mercury. Mercury's quite heavy. We have grape juice, wine, 12%, and 40% for vodka. Please note, this is one way that people making alcohol that's the kind you consume, can tell when the reaction is done. We measure the density of the liquid. If we have grape juice and it turns into wine, the density goes down. What these producers will use is a hydrometer. This looks like a large thermometer, but it has a very bulbous lower half. It floats. Depending on the density of the liquid, it will either sink or rise. This is how People that produce wine can tell when the alcohol content is correct. They place in the hydrometer and it will sink or rise depending on the density. There are little graduation marks written on the side and you can read off the value at the level of the liquid. Some solids now. Notice we have centimeters cubed, so aluminum, 2.7, tin, slightly heavier, iron, slightly heavier, copper, nickel. As you can see, we're going up in mass. Silver, lead, look how heavy lead is, uranium, gold, and tungsten. So with all these values, we can convert between mass and the volume. Previously, we used the molar mass to convert between grams and moles. Now we will use density to convert between 
the mass, and the volume. We can add in another layer to our game plan here. Remember this? To go from grams to moles or moles to grams, we use the molar mass. Now, to go from mass to volume, we can use the density. This is grams per mil, sometimes written as grams per centimeter cubed. Remember, milliliters and centimeters cubed represent the same thing. Also of note, that gases at standard temperature and pressure, one mole of gas will take up 22.4 liters of volume. This holds true for all gases at standard temperature and pressure. Let's now look at a few examples. A chemical reaction requires 116 grams of ethanol. How many liters are used? Write down what I'm given, 116 grams of my ethanol. That's the short form for ethanol. That's your alcohol part, that's your ethyl part, ethanol. I have 116 grams of ethanol and I want to go to volume in liters. I will now use the density to calculate that. Grams of ethanol. Let's go to our chart to see what ethanol was. Ethanol, right here, 0.789 grams per mil. 0 0.789 grams per one milliliter. Again, this is your density of ethanol. Now that I have in milliliters, I want to do one more step. I ask for it in liters. Milliliters on the bottom, so they cancel each other out. Liters on the top. One liter, 10 to the three mils. Grams cancel grams, mills cancel mills, left with liters. Exactly what I asked for. Calculate now 116 divided by 0.78 divided by 1000. Significant digits now. These are exact. This is exact. These are measured. Three digits. Three digits. Round this off to three significant digits. Approximately equal to 0 0.147 liters of ethanol. As you can see, we can now use density to convert between mass and volume. Next one asks me how many moles are in this many mils of mercury. So let's write down a plan. We have milliliters of mercury. We will go to our density of mercury. What's our density of mercury? Density of mercury is right here, 13.590 grams per mil. Thirteen point five nine zero grams per mil. Please note that this is the Greek letter rho. This is the symbol for density. So using our density, we'll convert from mils of mercury to grams of mercury. Finally, we'll use the molar mass to convert from grams of mercury to moles of mercury. Let's do that now. 234 mils of mercury, going from mils of mercury to grams of mercury. And then we're going from grams of mercury to moles of mercury. Use our density here, one mil, 13.590 grams. And our molar mass, remember it's always grams per one mole. What's the molar mass of mercury? If we go to our periodic table, it says it's 200.6 grams per mole. Mills cancel mills, grams cancel grams, left with moles. 234 times 13.590 divided by 200.6. Do the math now. 234 times 13.590 divided by 200.6. Significant digits now. 
These are both exact numbers. Everything else is measured. 3, 5, and 4. So I'll round this off to three significant digits. This will be approximately equal to 15.9 moles of mercury. Of interest is why the symbol for mercury is HG. In Greek, mercury is hydra agrarium. Pardon my pronunciation. What that means is liquid silver. Of course, it is not silver at all. It is a completely different element. But that's where the symbol HG comes from, for mercury. So as you can see here, we started with 234 milliliters of mercury. We used density to convert our volume to number of grams of mercury. And then we used the molar mass to convert to the number of moles of mercury. 15.9 moles of mercury. So you might want to add this section onto your chart. Perhaps I'll make one and post it in the lecture notes for you. Again, we're using density to convert volume to mass or mass to volume. I just spoke about mercury, HG, coming from the Greek words for liquid silver. Here's another story coming out of ancient Greece. Technically, Syracuse is in ancient Sicily, but apparently it was a Greek colony at the time. So there was a famous person, very rich person, back 265 years before the Common Era, BC, who gave a goldsmith pure gold to be used to create a crown for a temple this individual was creating. However, this individual heard rumors that this goldsmith was not to be trusted. The concern was that the goldsmith would remove part of the gold and add in another cheaper metal and pocket some of the gold. Silver could be added in, and without proper instrumentation, there's no way anybody would know the difference. At this time, there was very precise equipment to measure the weight of an object. However, there was no ability to measure the density of an object. Archimedes was granted with the task of determining the purity of this golden crown. There's a famous story, who knows how true it is, that he stepped into a bath that was filled to the top. What he noticed is that when he stepped in, the water rose. Some of it poured out of the tub. What Archimedes discovered at this point was that the volume displaced by his body was equal to the volume of liquid that was poured out of the tub. As a result, the volume of the object could be measured. Consequently, if we knew the volume and the mass we could determine the density. As we know the density of pure gold, we can now determine whether the crown was made of gold or made of something else. The story goes that when Archimedes found this out, he jumped out of the bathtub naked and ran through the streets yelling, Eureka! Eureka! Who knows how true the story is? It's a fun story anyways. So Archimedes then used this principle to determine the density of this golden crown. Let's examine that now. Again, if we take a beaker and we fill it up with water, what we can then do is we can place our golden crown into that beaker. Something like that. We can put a little lip on the side and put another beaker underneath. When we add this in, the water will pour out. As Archimedes discovered, this volume will be the same as the crown. So let's look at two different examples here. What would the volume of a 500 gram pure gold crown be? compared to the same mass of crown, but only 75% pure gold and 25% pure silver. Let's do two separate calculations and see what we get. Again, at the time, there were very precise tools to measure mass. We will then take the mass and convert it over to what the volume would be using the density of gold and silver. Density of gold. Gold is AU. How I remember that is AU, come back with my gold.
and my density of silver is 10.49 grams per centimeter cubed. You can see gold has a higher density than silver. Let's examine the density of 500 grams pure gold. So if the crayon was made of pure gold, this is what the volume would be. We take the mass of my gold, AU. We then multiply by my conversion factor for density, right here, AU. We're putting grams on the bottom and volume on the top. One centimeter cubed weighs 19.29 grams. We'll then convert from centimeters cubed to milliliters. One mil is one centimeter cubed. This applies to everything that exists. Grams of AU cancels grams of AU. Centimeters cubed cancels centimeters cubed. We have milliliters of gold. Significant digits, exact, exact, exact. Let's say that those are significant digits, so we'll round off to three significant digits. This rounds off to 25.9 milliliters. So if the crown was 100% gold, it should have a volume of 25.9 mils. If we place that into a beaker that was filled to the top, we should have 25.9 mils spill out into a second beaker. Now, what if it was a mixture of gold and silver? We'll say 75% gold, 25% silver. Just enough that you wouldn't notice. So we'll have our 500 gram crown. We'll do one calculation for gold and one calculation for silver. They're both the same crown. Here, this is 75% gold, 75%. This is grams of crown, grams of gold. Down here, this is 25%, 25 grams per cent. Crown, silver. We will then convert from grams to centimeters cubed, and then finally convert from centimeters cubed to milliliters. Do the same down here. Grams of silver, centimeter cubed of silver, centimeters cubed to milliliters. Again, these values are the same for all objects. Density of gold, 19.29. Density of silver was what? 10.49. Do the math on both. Grams of crown cancels grams of crown. Grams of gold cancels grams of gold. Centimeters cubed cancels centimeters cubed. Same down here, except for silver. We work it out now. Now, we're gonna add these up, right? Because they come together to make the crown. Significant digits, exact, 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 exact. We'll say these are exact values here. This would have three and four, three and four. So we'll round this final answer off to three significant digits. This is approximately equal to 31.4 milliliters. Now notice the difference here. If it was pure gold, it would have that volume. If it was some gold and some silver, it would have a larger volume. So pretty easy to figure out. Stick it in a pool of water, see how much comes out, measure that. I don't recall the end result of this story. I believe this goldsmith was cheating the individual that gave him the gold. If you'd like to know more about the story, you can look it up. It's a story of Archimedes, really. It's where the term Eureka comes from. So again, I've talked about the stories behind the math and the science. This is one of those stories. It makes things more interesting.
Let's now come from out of the past back to the present, and we'll do some calculations for the laboratory. A solution is made by adding 32 grams of sodium chloride and topping it up to 250 mils with water. So this is my solute, and 225 is my total solution. Again, it says I'm not adding 225 mils of water. It says I'm adding the sodium chloride first, and then I'm adding enough water so that the final volume is 225 mils. That's what topping up means. Let's go through and figure out what this would be in terms of percent concentration and molarity. So percent concentration is what we want. Weight by volume. We have the weight, 32.0 grams of my solute over my volume, final volume, 225 mils of solution. Let's cross multiply. Divide both sides by 225 to get rid of the 225. X is equal to 14.222 repeating. This would be a percentage. Significant digits. This is an exact number. We have 3, we have 3. We round this off to 3 significant digits. 14.2% weight by volume final answer. So that's the concentration weight by volume of 32 grams of sodium chloride in 225 mils total solution. Now we want to know what the volume per volume percent would be of this same solution. So what's my plan? I can go back to the original value, but I'm not going to. We already have some of this calculated. It's 14 0.2 grams sodium chloride over 100 mils total solution. I'm going to reuse this. Notice as I use this though, I'm going to use the value that is not rounded off. Remember, we don't round off until the final answer. I would like to eventually turn this into mils over mils. Notice this is already in milliliters. I now have to convert from grams of sodium chloride to mils of sodium chloride. For this, I will use the density of sodium chloride. Density of sodium chloride is 2.16 grams per mil. You can get this from the chart from up above. So let's do that now. Again, I'm going to start from where the other one finished. We will then convert from grams of sodium chloride to milliliters sodium chloride. 1 mil, 2.16 grams. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to cancel these out. But I'm going to keep the 100 on the bottom here. 100 milliliter solution. You'll see why in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take 14.2 and divide by 2.6. When I do that, I get 0.6. Now hopefully you see why I did that because I want a percent solution. If I keep this as 100, it's already as percent. Significant digits now. Exact number, exact number. We have three and three. We'll round this off to three significant digits. This would be 6.58 over 100, which is equal to 6.58%. It's percent volume by volume. Final answer. Now notice, it's exactly the same solution. We're talking about a percent concentration. One is percent weight by volume. The other is percent volume by volume. Notice the large difference there. So that's why it's very important. You are very clear on your units. Let's now do the same solution and we'll convert to molarity. Molarity, as you hopefully remember, moles per liter. So what's the plan? Let's start from question one. Fourteen point two 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 grams of sodium chloride over a hundred mils of solution. Again, we are going to use the not rounded off version. What I'm going to do here, 
I'm going to convert grams to moles. I'm going to convert mils to liters. Convert from grams to moles of sodium chloride, and we'll convert from mils to liters. This is an easy one. Over here, a molar mass of sodium chloride, sodium is 22.99, chlorine is 35.45. This gives me a molar mass of 58.44. Grams cancel grams, mils cancel mils. I'll have moles per liter. Fourteen point two 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 divided by one hundred divided by fifty eight point four four times a thousand. Significant digits, exact, 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 exact. I have. I guess it's four point two two. That was from the first problem. Uh, here I had uh, three and three, so I'm going to go with three significant digits. Approximately equal to two point four three moles per liter, which is the same as saying 2.43 molarity. Again, it's exactly the same solution, but we have three different values that represent the concentration. 14.2% weight by volume, 6.58 volume by volume, or 2.43 molarity, moles per liter. Let's do the last one now. Weight by weight. What's my plan? I have 14.2 grams of sodium chloride over 100 mils total solution. I want to have grams over grams. For the first one, there's no change. This is going to be a problem. Converting from mils of total solution to grams. Remember what's in the total solution. We have sodium chloride and we have water. Density of both. Again, if we draw a little diagram here, we would have a certain amount of sodium chloride would take up some volume and we'll have a certain amount of our water. The total volume will be 100 mils. I know my mass of sodium chloride. What I don't know is my mass of water. We can calculate that though. I can use the density of sodium chloride to determine the volume of sodium chloride. I will then subtract that away from the 100 mils to get my volume of water. Let's do that now. So calculate the volume of sodium chloride first. 14.22222 grams, 2.16 grams. Approximately equal to three significant digits, 6.58 milliliters of sodium chloride. Now we'll calculate our volume of the water in the solution. It's 100 mils total solution, and I'm subtracting away my volume of sodium chloride. Now, notice this is not the final answer, so I will use that initial value that was not rounded off. This will now give me 5 was to round that off, three significant digits, 93.4 mils of water. If I add these together now, that would make up the total volume of my water. Now we want weight by weight. Consequently, here I have 9.34 mils of water. I will use the density of water. One mil is one gram of water to convert to the mass. Now you could just do this in your head, but I want to show you the work. 93.4 grams of water. Okay, now we can do the calculation. 
we have weight over weight, 14.222 grams of sodium chloride over, again, we're mixing our 14.222 grams of sodium chloride plus the mass of the water. And this will give us total solution. What I would like is the percent concentration, so my unknown is X. Let's cross multiply. Divide both sides by 107. These cancel out. I'm left with 13. significant digits. We'll round this off to three significant digits. X is approximately equal to 13.2. This is percent weight by weight. There you have it, another concentration. 13.2 weight by weight. 2.43 molarity, 6.58% volume by volume, or 14.2 weight by volume. Different ways to represent the concentration of the same solution. We have one more. What's the parts per million by mass? Well, from before, the not rounded off version, this is what we got from above, weight by weight. I want the parts per million, so X number of grams over 1 million grams. Cross multiply. Divide both sides by 100. And X is equal to... 3 significant digits 1.32 times 10 we got we have 1 2 3 4 5 10 to the 5 parts per million sodium chloride final answer now notice this is a very large number normally parts per million is reserved for very very small numbers 1 to 100 parts per million anything more than that we usually don't work in parts per million so five different ways to represent the same concentration. I'd like you to try this on your own right now. We have a 12% weight by weight solution of acetone. The density of the solution is this much. So this is the solution density. We then have information about pure acetone. It has a molar mass of that much and a density of this much. This is my pure acetone. So please note, we have the solution of acetone and we have the pure acetone. Don't mix those up. So what I want you to do here is convert this from percent weight by weight to weight by volume, volume by volume, molarity, and parts per million. I will just write the answers and we can take this up at our next tutorial or you can ask me outside of class. Again, you'll have five different ways to represent the same solution. Once you have finished that, you now have the, enough information to do these practice problems involving the last few lectures. I have the answers written below here. So again, try these all on your own. So in today's lecture, we expanded on density. Prior to this lecture, we only talked about the density of water but we can get the density of anything that exists. We can measure its mass. We can measure its volume. Density is the amount of mass per certain amount of volume, three-dimensional space. We talked about how to calculate density using displacement of water, Archimedes principle. We then used our knowledge of density to convert between different ways of expressing concentration. 
we have weight by weight, volume by volume, weight by volume, molarity, and parts per million. These will all be important skills for you to have moving forward in the laboratory. That's all for today. Until next time.